Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I've got something new to play with today. Um, a viewer, ex New Yorker, asked me if I have ever used the Color Blocks blends. They were designed by um, Eileen Hull, and I would never heard of the product. So I went to the Color Blocks website, I saw them, hadn't seen them in any stores, so I asked them if they could send me a sample. They sent me these four colors, and uh, we're gonna try them out today. We're gonna see, um, you know, what they're all about. They seem to be like a, almost like a little ink blender. Um, their claim to fame is that they have 10 times the amount of ink, I guess in the handle here, than um, like a typical ink pad. So, um, oh, you can see I kind of squeezed it a little bit and I guess you kind of pounce it and get the ink flowing. You might be able to ink up stamps with it. I'm not sure. We're gonna play and experiment with it and see blah, 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 and see exactly what we can come up with. So let's go to the table and have a play, shall we? Okay, this is just going to be a really quick kind of down and dirty play with these um, Ellen Hall. These are color box blends um, by Ellen Hall, and I never heard about them before, and they sent me a few to demo because a uh, viewer requested um, a demo, and I have a request and tutorials page, new videos and request page, so if you have a request, there's something you want me to see over on my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com, you can leave a comment on the request page, and then I just kind of scan through and I try to play in my programming according to what you guys want to see. So. Um, if you ever, you know, you're curious about a product, I'll help, I'll, if I can, if I can get a sample, if I can find it in a store, I will try to share it with you and see what I think. So, I've just been playing it around, playing around with these for a few minutes. I didn't want to do too much before I turned on the camera because I, um, I want it to be a really kind of like first impression review. So, what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to show you kind of some blending, um, with these blends and we'll see how it looks and I also I left one that I didn't open yet because I wanted to show you kind of what you do when you take it out of the package um and this is what the packaging looks like it's got like a little blister thing over it but that's what it will look like I don't know if they're in stores yet I think they're pretty new so I just wanted to kind of show you that so this is what it looks like when you open it up there's no color on the sponge and if you touch if you press you can feel kind of like a hard plastic tip in there and that is kind of like a little pump that takes the ink this whole handle is full of ink and it's like pigment ink and it takes the ink um, up to the sponge so to begin to get it primed you're gonna press it onto your paper and the ink will start flowing you can kind of see like a little spot of it there so this does take a little bit of time to get it going that's why I got the other ones going off camera and I did notice that like on one of my applicators the tip is out much further than the other and it feels like this one the tip is out pretty far, far so I'm not sure which is you know if, if there is variation between the ones or if I got a couple duds or I got a couple I, I don't know they both seem to work but um, I did prefer it when the tip was in the machine a little bit further machine I guess it's not really a machine so you just keep you just want to make sure that before you begin a project you get that ink worked into the sponge tip like I don't think that's not full yet you kind of want it like an ink pad like if you look at these it almost looks like an ink pad because it's got so much ink in it um, so that's what I recommend you do before and you know I am letting the camera roll because well for one I did that video when I asked you if longer was better and I wanted to you know this being a product review I wanted you to really see how long this is going to take so that you don't get them out of the package and you're like I can't get the ink to flow Lindsay I don't know mine there's something wrong with mine they're not colorful <laughs> you know so you know, I did this to all the other ones. It did take a few minutes to get that ink worked into the tip. And I think it's good to do this off your project so you don't end up with, um, with ink, you know, scratchy, uneven lines. So I actually had these tags sitting here. Um, so I thought I would just use these just for quick inking of the edges. There, it works really good for that. Okay, let nice and clean fingers. Well, my fingers are never clean, but you know, they're not black, so any other ink is from something else. So you can see it's very easy to ink an edge, and I'm being a little sloppy. I would be careful though, because like it almost felt like um, my cardstock wanted to catch. I think you could cut, kind of shred that tip if you're not careful, because it's not a really hard foam. It's not like a stamp pad um, foam. It's much, much uh, more porous, much softer. So I, I don't know how, I think probably the tips will hold up as long as the, um, as long as the, the ink is full, but they're not a refillable product. So um, you're probably not going to be able to, you know, refill them, obviously. So what I'm doing here, should I zoom in? I'm going to zoom in a bit. What I'm doing here is just going over an embossed panel 
And when I want to add ink, what I'm doing is I'm kind of pressing it here on the edge and then just dragging it in. And so the more ink I add, the more opaque coverage I can get, or I can just kind of go lightly like I am now and um, kind of let some white show through. Okay, so I'm not doing anything too aggressive here. Now here, it seems like the tip is, is in the machine a little bit more. I'm going to keep calling it a machine. I don't know why. Um, but I can keep building up and adding more. It's very much like um, using a blender on a pigment ink pad. I do believe this is pigment ink in here, and we're actually going to try some embossing, heat embossing on this, just to, uh, um, just for funsies. And I'm going to do the green. Now the green, um, the thing with this one, the can you hear? Hold on, I'm going to be quiet. Can you hear this? Okay, that's that hard nib. It's kind of like. Uh, rubbing against the paper. If I give it the, if I barely touch the tip to the paper, that nib's not touching it. But let me just show you over here. I think you can see that. Let me slide my paper. You know, see that nib one is is really close to the to the edge of the foam. Let me press it down with my fingers. Let me so you can see that. See that little nib in there. I think you can see that. That's like where the ink is coming out of. That's it's really high up on this one, and I'm not sure why. It's high up on this one. And it's high up on the black one. So I'm not sure which one. Which way is right, you know? Um, you know, these being a brand new product, this could be like a prototype, I'm not sure. I know they're available for sale. I've seen them on Amazon, but I uh, haven't seen them in any of my local stores. But I do like how when I overlap the colors between these two, it looks really nice. Um, the red that I have doesn't mix. It just kind of gives me brown when I mix with the green, which is, you know, pretty you know what you'd expect and it gives me gray when I mix it with the blue so um, I don't I only have these four colors so I can't really give a really good I can't get too crazy with the blending just because the colors aren't gonna aren't really gonna be that compatible I will add a little bit of um, red down here though so you can see it how it blends I obviously I wouldn't do this with the black underneath there typically but I just wanted you to be able to see the detail and, um, you know, obviously you can use your ink pads and blending tools. I just wanted to do this review because it was requested. And um, I'm lucky to be in the situation where I usually can get samples of products before they hit the stores and let you guys know about them. Um, now, my fingers are completely a mess because I always have to stick my fingers in everything and like peel things. Oh, what's going on in there? So you can see there's like a little X cut in there where the uh, ink comes out. So if I want more ink, so I don't get a blob on my project, I just press it out over there and this rub it on. And you can see how I get kind of a gray because these colors, um, like that's a green based blue and this is an orange based red, so they give me kind of a gray. They neutralize each other, but that's fine. That's what I would expect. There are a lot more colors in the line, so you know, you probably want to get your favorite colors and maybe colors that would blend better together. All right, then I thought it would be kind of cool to take this black and maybe hit some of the highlight areas. Let's try that. Um, and then, I don't know if they recommend this or not. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, if you do get ink, because this is pigment ink, if you do get ink on your sponge of another color, I would just kind of like press it and rub it off, like on some scrap paper, because I think that would really take care of it. I think this is kind of cool looking. I don't know what you guys think. You Please let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm sure there's going to be, I think actually having a brown and a black of these, in your scrapbook bag would be really great for just inking the edges and because you know when you're scrapbooking you really don't want to get your fingers inky because you don't want to get it um, on your photos or on your album all right but you know when you hold down your paper because it is pigment ink and it stays wet or longer your fingers are going to get inky so there you there you have that folks and if I want a little bit more black on the edge let me prime it get it going um, I can lift it up and just really hit the edges but you know my fingers are getting inky because I'm obviously holding the uh, the panel here turn it all right now I wanted to um, see if this would take embossing powder so I have a couple different kinds here I think I want to use some UT first because I want to kind of protect some of the area so let's sprinkle on I'm gonna try to sprinkle it so they don't have to pour too much back I don't know if it's just sticky enough to hold the UT we shall see. Let me just kind of shake it around, see if it's... No, it, well, it's sticking all right. I'm going to have to throw this scrap piece away, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. In fact, we'll put a little bit more UT, because I want to make sure some of those colors will show through. 
And then I want to use, um, I've got some metallic gold and kind of some coppery. I actually don't really know what it is because it's kind of one of my custom mixes. I didn't want to put back in my regular jar because I didn't want it to contaminate anything. So we'll see what we get with those. I like to make coppery mixes. I don't know if you guys do that. Make sure you're embossing powder sometimes. Um, sometimes you get some really cool combinations, but you never want to put mixes back in the main container because some of your metallics will tarnish and you don't want it to like contaminate anything else. Even if you get the most beautiful mix and you think, oh, I'm going to mix up a big batch of that, don't because you could end, it could end up something in one jar could, tar could make the other one kind of go off a little bit, tarnish a little bit. So I use these little those little jars for that. I don't think I have enough on there for embossing to stick everywhere, but that's all right. It'll give me kind of a distressed ink, a distressed look. And it's not, you know, this isn't really what these blenders are made for. So I'm just kind of seeing if they'll do it. So this is not like a, you know, company recommended thing or anything. All right, so let's heat it up. I got my heat gun right here. Let's see, so shall we chat while we heat this up? Why not? It's a weekend, it's rainy Saturday. Um, we're going to dye some Easter eggs in a little while. Um, oh, that's a great tip. If you've got like those Easter egg pellets, then um, you can make your own spray inks. Now, they just don't add vinegar to them like you would if you were dyeing eggs, but you could make your own like little spray inks for your crafts. You know, it's just food coloring basically in those pellets, so I wouldn't expect it to last, you know, from fading for a long time. But if you're just making some inks for fun or to make some wrapping paper with, um, that's a great way to use those. And I was at Martin's, which, you know, is only local to Mainers, but they had the, like, the pause kits with the Easter egg pellets and the decorations and the little egg stands for 25 cents. And they had the little metal egg dipper, and I love to save those to use as embellishments on my scrapbook pages. So if you are in Maine, go to Martin's and get some of those pause uh, egg dyeing kits, because they're on sale. Looking forward to that. I uh, went out and bought white eggs. We, are, we, didn't, we don't have chickens this year. Um, we only had two left. We had a fox incident. And uh, so we gave those two to somebody who has a nice heated barn because it's too hard to keep two chickens warm throughout the winter in Maine. And, um, and we always had brown eggs because that's what our chickens laid. So I actually bought some white eggs for the kids to die this year. Oh, this is beautifully grungy. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure if I heated everything. I'll have to check because it did kind of skip a little bit. Um, so I kind of like that look and I can go over that with like a clear embossing, a clear ink if I want and add more or I could even go in probably with some more, some more color because I've got all that, all that powder heated up. So why don't we do that? We'll go in with some more color. I hope this isn't terribly boring, but you know, I did ask you guys on the long and short videos and you guys are just like the best because most people on YouTube, they just have no patience. They have no attention span. You guys are totally awesome. How did I luck out? I don't even know. All right, so now I need a new scrap paper. Okay, off camera, I've got a piece of scrap paper. I'm like priming that over there because I do not want to get embossing powder on the tips of these because then it'll be transferring to everything. Um, do a little bit of red. In there, gonna prime that. But I don't know, maybe the tips are supposed to be out because like this one, I can't feel the tip in there. It's like flush with the bottom. And I can't, the, it's like the ink isn't coming. I got it all over my fingers, but it's like it's not really coming out of the tip that well. And I'm, you know, it could just be I have a prototype. And, you know, maybe all the kinks aren't worked out yet. Let's see. Now let's try this with some more clear UT. My, my, it feels like, <laughs> my table feels like it's sandy. It's like, feels like it's been to the beach. Feels like my sandy dog has walked all over it. She has not, though. She's a very large golden retriever. Yeah, give them a nice glossy coat there. You can really see. So that pigment ink, it is, it sticks really well. And it's not like this is a recommended use of it or anything. This is just me playing around with a new product. Um, they have all the information available of this product is on the color box website and I'll put a link below if you want to go check it out and see what colors they offer and like I said I've seen it for sale on Amazon I don't know if it's at like joanne.com yet or not but that's usually kind of if I'm gonna buy a bunch that's usually what I'll do I'll go to like Joanne's um, when they're having their 50% off sale and I will stock up like on my reinkers and stuff like that because it, it gets expensive if you've been stamping as a hobby for a while you know like when 
it's it gets affordable the more you do it but when you have to like you know get your inkers and stuff like that and you know get start off with stamp pads it gets expensive so and that's the other thing i want to make sure that you're informed when you're going to go buy stuff so that you're getting what you're really going to use and you don't waste your money um okay oh that's pretty i really like this i could totally going to use this on a card um now i also want to show you now i'm not going to save that powder because um because it's all mixed up and I've got metallics and there's really not a lot there anyway so I don't want to risk lose it, ruining a whole jar. Now if I had another project like maybe I'll maybe I'll use this on the other ones that I've already inked up since I have it right there but I would never put it back in the jar in the state because there's just too many variables there. So just just know that you know use them up on the backgrounds you're working on currently but don't save it for another project because it might tarnish between now and then and not be very good. All right so the other thing I wanted to show you is actually stamping with it with this and I've got embossing powder on my stamp. There we go. Um, so let's use this as an ink pad. So um, again, I'm just going to grab this. I got scrap paper right here. I'm just going to use this. Um, so you want to kind of start your your ink. Now this one is also doesn't have the tip kind of sticking out, but it seems to be releasing the ink really well. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of rub. I, I've tried a couple different methods. It seems like when I tap it. Let me find the one that I just did. When I tapped it on there, I would get these little kind of darker dots, which isn't bad. It doesn't really look bad, but it's obviously not, it's obviously not perfect. Not that I like really am worried about that with the background so much, but I just wanted to let you know. So if I'm tapping like this and I'll show you just so you can see on the stamp, um, like right there you can see where there's like little concentrations I think you can it might be hard to see on that rubber but you can see where there's like more concentration of color um, so you know just just to let you know I would tap it out get it going pick it up and then bring it over and the reason I wanted to try this was because as you know stamp pads can be pricey these I think are about three dollars each um, and the packaging says there's ten times the amount of ink in the handle than there is on a stamp pad obviously if you're doing a lot of background stamping this might be a little take a little too long to ink up a big stamp but knowing that you can use it for that purpose you know I think is important it's like it's one of those things it's like one you know a tiny ink pad might be what you need like a cat's eye ink pad a full-size ink pad might be what you need with your inkers you know this might be what you need it depends on how much stamping you do how much inking you do um and what your preference is in product so you know what's perfect for me might not be perfect for you okay I want to add some of this black I think, you know, the more I'm doing this, I'm thinking the tip is, sh is supposed to be pushed out more like it is on this one because it seems like it really helps me release the uh, the ink and then when I'm like applying it, I don't seem to, I seem to be able to get more ink out that way. But I'll have to get back, I'll have to ask, uh, I'll have to ask them on Colorbox and see what they say. Um, and then I can put that information in the video description when I get it. Okay, so now I've got kind of like a blue-black thing going on here. And usually when I stamp on to do my backgrounds, I usually will have it face side up and I'll put the ink paper down and I completely miss the end of that, but, oh uh, well. <laughs> It'll be fine. I should put a big piece of paper over and rub on the back over the paper so I don't get my fingers in it, but I think we've already realized that regardless if the product is supposed to keep your hands clean or not, I will stick my fingers in the ink just because that is how a Lindsay do. All right, so there we've got, this is our stamp is by Lost Coast Designs. Um, so this was just the blue, first time I tried it, this is the blue and the black. I, I got a better impression with this, I think. Um, and then these are some panels that I just embossed with no embossing powder, just uh, pressure embossed, then blended the colors. As you can see, the blue and the green blended really well. And then this is the one that I added the heat embossing to because it is a pigment ink, so it sticks. Um, and that's the other thing. It's such a slow drying ink that it, um, that it blends really well. So there's my review of the color box blends by Ellen Hall. And, um, oh, one thing I did notice is that the, uh, the printing on the package may, is starting to rub off. And I just recently, I've only used this, you know, today. Um, you know, it's starting to rub off on all of these. So you might want to, well, obviously you can see on the tip what color you have, but you might even want to use a Sharpie and write what color it is just so you have that. So you don't have to open up your caps to see what you have. Of course, if you're like me, 
you got big old ink stains on it, so it doesn't really matter anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this review. Like I said, if you have a product you'd like me to try, let me know. It's best if you leave it on my blog under the requests tab because I go back and I check that. Sometimes I, things get lost in the comments. Um, because I do get so many comments. I, I love my comments. Please don't think that I'm saying don't. I love comments, um, but I, you know, I don't want to lose that. That's why I put the request page there, just so I didn't lose the requests when you guys asked for them. So uh, thank, you again, thank you so much again for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, happy crafting. Oh, all the information and links will be in the video description. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm done. Done talking. Bye-bye.